Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 37 of Ultron the Real Robot. This part is going to be the last episode of the main build of Ultron and after that we're going to go on and do more on its AI. So in this episode I'm hoping to get the majority of the cosmetics finished off. There may be some minor tweaks in the future, there's definitely more work to do on its brain. But we're going to basically design and print some more big bits of plastic and we're also going to talk about the future of the project. Last time I made these shoulder bells, some biceps and also these parts which we now need to fit on. And we need to make some bits and pieces that make the torso wider, do the forearms and then see how the head scale looks. So the green bits are the bits that need attaching. I need to print these uh, front spiky bits here to uh, put those on because they've never been made. And then we need something to attach these scoops to and those are going to be conduits essentially that run up the side of Ultron. So here's one of my finished side pieces ready for printing but I wanted to talk a little bit more about fusion and some of the features. So if I turn on my sketches here we can see that there's a lot of sketches floating around. Um, so th this has basically got a lot of additional features from 1, 2, 3D design. So if I go all the way back we can see that um, we well, did have some sketches here. I did a loft to uh, make the solid object here and I rounded lots of the corners off um, to uh, kind of get the basic uh, setup that we've got there. I've also added some mounting tabs so this can be mounted on uh, bridging some gears that exist. So that all got rounded off nicely. Um, and then I used a feature where um, essentially I drew some sketches um, for the pieces I wanted and I extruded those out in patch mode which means you can actually extrude from a sketch. Um, and then I um, basically gave those some thickness and I've used those to actually remove them from the uh, from the main structure here so that this gives us the cutouts. So that's a pretty easy way to um, draw this thing which would be much harder to do in 1, 2, 3D design. So here they are and those were of course uh, 3D printed on the Tazis. So we've got uh, two of those, I did them on two printers at once. And I think it took around uh, four to five hours each but they've come out pretty well. There's a few issues with the overhangs but I've been pretty careful that all of my lines are slightly sloped which makes it a bit easier. So these mount on here of course which is just by this uh, ab actuator which in fact I've never powered up. It's a 3D printed uh, lead screw there and I think I'm probably just going to leave it that way because I don't really need the functionality. It's also probably not strong enough now Ultr Ultron's quite heavy on top. So uh, we've got these tabs to bridge the gear if we ever want to use it. And that sticks on there and then the scoop part is going to mount on the top of this. This actuator is forward as far as it goes, so there's enough clearance there, so we should have space to just fit those in. So I've stuck these pieces on, I've stuck these pieces on, I've stuck this piece in, and I've just actually decided that these scoops here would um, probably mount straight on here. And as this uh, moves, obviously lots of this is Ninja Flex, these pieces you'll note move independently. These were going to be attached to the tops here, but actually it looks pretty good as it is. It's quite dynamic, so I'm probably just going to make little extensions that just disappear inside there somewhere, the conduit should go all the way to the back of the uh, robot there, but it can't really because of the arm actuator. So I'm just going to disappear it inside so it doesn't just stop. And I think that'll do. And obviously that makes the whole body a lot wider. I thought about making the tops just straight like this, but actually thought that I want them to curve outwards slightly. So I've uh, made this sketch line here in another copy of it and uh, just done a sweep there to bring that out so it's curved and uh, then rounded off some of the bits. I need to be careful of the arm actuator, so I've cut the back off there. But again, that's a sketch line, which is just drawn on a plane, and I've split the body with it. Right, here they are. So one goes on there, and we'll stick those on eventually, and the other one goes on there. So those things just disappear inside, and I think that looks okay. I'm pretty happy with his torso width and detail there. Now we've got all the bits in, so now let's talk about those forearms. Fusion 360's got some extra features besides just solid modeling mode, and we have got the sculpt mode, where we can go and sort of fluidly modi modify surfaces. Um, there's also a sort of hidden mode if we do a solid model just by putting a box down and we go and disable the design history, um, some extra features appear. So now if I click on a face, I've got this extra thing called edit face. And that allows me literally to pull this face around. I can subdivide it even more if I want. And I can go and uh, bend it there, for instance. And then that makes me a nice um, face there. So I've used that basically to um, 
modify a solid model to draw Ultron's forearms. So um, there's one here that's set up for printing on the bed that I've cut up, and this is the one actually um, there on the robot. So uh, all I've done is modified all these faces from a box, basically, to get this kind of sweep that he has on his arms there. So uh, some surfaces I've modified more than others, and some of them I've used just the chamfers and fillet tools, but uh, there we go, I've managed to sort of make that form, and I probably need to practice at this some more. The one on the right here I've cut out a bit more to make sure the servos fit, and I've also um, sliced this up into multiple parts for printing, so we can print those flat on the bed. Here's one of those forearm parts, and I've got the opposite part printing on another printer. Yep, here's some more of the prints being done, so still quite a way to go out of all of those eight pieces. Here they are, I've stuck the halves together, so we've got all eight pieces there. They remind me a bit of the artist formerly known as Prince in some respects, but um, I've quite enjoyed modelling the forms on those, so that's quite good. I should be using that feature in other projects. So let's see how those fit on the forearms. So there's the outer forearm piece, and that's the inner forearm. I need to move this servo cable so it goes through the hole in the back of the arm, but that should fit on there quite nicely. And there's clearance there so that servo horn can turn inside it. Right, I think those arms look all right proportionally. Now that the uh, torso is wider, we'll come back to the head and shoulders in a bit. So I'm just going to make those extra pieces and hopefully we're done down there. I've made a hand back and a thumb guard there on each hand and the hand can still rotate, of course. So that's all fine. I fitted an elbow plate on each side, which will eventually have all the wiring tidied up behind it. There'll probably be some nice grey conduit all zip tied off. I'm pretty happy with the profile we've got now for the arm there and widening the body out has really helped as well to see Ultron's true form. But now let's talk about that head and shoulder assembly. I'm pretty sure his head is actually too small, but uh, Ultron in fact has quite a long neck and these um, flat shoulder blade things should be sloping up to his neck and his neck needs to come a bit higher. I don't want to make his neck too long because then his head will look even smaller like a pinhead, but we are going to move the neck up a bit just by 20 or 30 mil and try and re-set uh, these so they slope up a bit and thicken up some of those neck conduits. So all we're going to do is replace this middle section of the gimbal here with a slightly taller one. So that just boosts the head up a little bit and that should just give it that extra bit of height and then we're going to redesign these conduits, thicken the neck up and change those plates as I say. Well, his head looks a bit funny now. Um, obviously, we need to bulk the neck up and move these shoulder plates. I've left the neck sticks here that pushed by servos, which actually move the head around the same length. They were always a bit long, which meant he couldn't look down very much. So uh, hopefully, he'll be able to look down on people now. I can always adjust those as we go. But for now, I'm going to leave them. So let's make some different brackets for these and sort out some fatter neck conduits and mountings. I fitted some additional brackets above where they were so that these now um, sit at an angle here. It's not quite the angle I needed, but I do need the head to still be to turn above it. I've made some new conduits for the neck here. These are the old ones, and the new ones, of course, are more conical, so they're fatter at the bottom, which is a bit more like the way Ultron is. So I've put spaces in between those, which are little discs, and they're on bungee cords, so they can stretch and they can twist and all sorts of things. So I've just made some extra little hooks for those and they should sit nicely in there. So that um, pretty much fills in that gap at the front. There should be something else, but um, I'm not going to do that for now. I've used the old um, conduit pieces there that I had for the necks on the back here just to widen the neck out. So now I think that gives a pretty good structure and I think it's pretty good proportionally. Yep, so pretty happy with that. His head is a little bit too small, but I think it looks just about okay now. There's another little shot from above there, just waving the camera in the air on the tripod and from down below where children will be standing. I've said this is the last cosmetic episode for Ultron, but that's not really true because it's not the end of the series, so there will be some more things that I come back to. I still need to do something about the eyes and the nose that everybody dislikes. At the moment, the camera board is so big the camera won't fit in the eye, and it can't go anywhere else, but I might be doing another solution for that, either a camera that will fit in the eyes, in which case I can restyle the eyes, or an actual uh, some other method of tracking, which might be to do with um, augmented reality and virtual reality, which is how the series is going to proceed now, because that's how Ultron's brain is going to work. 
So what I really want to do is now I've got the brain, I've got the senses, I want to trigger something in virtual reality that creates objects, perhaps balls that fall down like a giant marble run. And depending on where those fall, that sends data back out of the environment to uh, give Ultron volition and also tweak his emotions in the brain I've made, which of course is connected to Ultron via Bluetooth. And I think within that there'll be sub-assemblies and you can go in with virtual reality and go and tweak everything and move things around and influence how Ultron feels. So it's going to be like a giant machine running, but actually all built in virtual reality. And I talked about virtual reality a while ago, but how am I doing with the virtual reality development, you might ask? In my video about uh, basically developing in virtual reality, I'm using Unity 3D. I showed there was a kind of tutorial with... Um, basically a simple environment with blocks and things you could pick up and I've moved on a bit and created my own based on that tutorial so check back on that video but if I look around now we can see there's a giant Ultron head in fact here and um, there's some other blocks and things and some of the stuff I can do with the controllers is teleporting around so that works pretty well with the laser pointer I can pick up the objects and uh, throw them and all the physics works. You'll notice on my left hand controller I've got this rather interesting array of um, what looks like Lego bricks and in fact this is for another project. It's actually a Lego gun that shoots Lego man heads. There we go, so all of those, uh, all of those physics work quite well. You should see uh, lots of yellow Lego man heads shooting out of my gun there. They do expire after 10 seconds so it doesn't bog the environment down but uh, if we go back over this way a bit let's um, have a look inside Ultron's head. If I, I can walk around, of course, as well. It's just I don't have that much space in here. So let's uh, teleport inside Ultron's head. This is the actual CAD for Ultron's head. And I can uh, look around on the inside here. I don't know what happens. Whoops, if I shoot it. Well, it's fallen down there now. So there we go. Um, but yeah, pretty much I can uh, do all the physics and things work, so... It's a lot of fun, and of course I can actually teleport up onto objects as well. So I've taken the rules away that mean I can teleport on anything, even if it's not the ground. So um, that leaves me up here, and if I pick up this block, it just leaves me there, which is a lot of fun as well. So I can shoot the wall down now, in fact, and it leaves me floating in the air. Obviously everything falls off the edge of the world there. And it leaves me floating, which is quite interesting. And now I can walk around, although it's a bit of a weird feeling, actually. So I'm going to teleport back down. So this is just a very simple environment, but uh, obviously the physics works really well. So uh, let me go and see if I can shoot all those blocks. There we go. So I should be able to make a sort of virtual ball run, basically, is what I'm imagining, with uh, lots of things that drop down and uh, blocks and things that you can move to obstruct the uh, way that things flow. It'll be quite a lot more elaborate than this, like a giant sort of virtual reality mechanical machine. And depending on where things drop down through regions, uh, we can have Ultron feel emotions. We can put things into specific places and stack them up or put balls in tubes to create memories. And, and there's going to be lots of things like that. Of course that machine in virtual reality and the whole virtual worlds can get built out as much as we like and we can keep adding units to them. And we can design those units in Fusion 360 like we did with Ultron's head and bring that straight into Unity and put it into virtual reality. I'm imagining something a bit like a virtual marble run with balls getting created at the top and running through all of the units of the machine. And either you go in in virtual reality and tweak around with it to change how Ultron feels or there's a certain random aspect to do with the physics. Now some of those machines may be sub-robots which do something different depending on Ultron's emotions and also triggering sensors and also when the balls get created they could get created differently so some could expire, some could multiply, some could turn into a cube after a certain amount of time and those sorts of things so we do really introduce that random volition aspect. We'll have to see how that works out in time but of course I can just keep building that out and tweaking it or going to virtual reality and tweaking it um, and seeing what influence that has. So I will be building out some more cosmetics, dealing with the speech and some electronics and also more physical units in Ultron's Bluetooth connected brain that represent what's going on in the virtual world because there's still quite a lot of space in there. So that's actually all I'm going to do for this video. Next time we're going to come back and largely be working in the virtual world where we are of course working with the physical robot so we can see what influence it has. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects and you should also check out my Patreon campaign which is how most of my projects are funded. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. 
All right, that's all for now.